Brandon Hafstader was a lonely orphan, just begging for someone to adopt him. The orphanage was a terrible place. Other orphans would pick on him and the adults would yell orders at him. He always wondered why his parents left him here to rot. His questions would always be interrupted by more yelling. He grew up trying to be the best person he could be, but others made it hard. Brandon would never get to be the successful young man he always wanted to be when he grew up. When he was too old for the orphanage, they kicked him out and threw him on the streets. He became a homeless criminal. He would be arrested for being accused of murder. It got worse when he couldn't get a lawyer and was sentenced to death. His death sentence was put on hold, though due to the bodies of his victims never being found. He got enough food and exercise in prison to get into great shape, but he wouldn't get respect. At the age of 23, he was a 6'5", 230-pound lean young man. He had been in prison for three years and it wasn't getting any better. The victim's bodies were found and being studied for DNA. After four days, it was confirmed that Nick was the killer and his death sentence was carried out. He was furious, but accepted his fate. Soon he was taken to the death chamber. Brandon Hafstader. The warden began to say, You have been sentenced to death by the state of Kansas. Brandon was humming his favorite music. The only music that ever made him happy. He felt calm, cool and collected. He knew this was the end and there was nothing he could do about it. Once the clock struck 12, the liquid was injected into his arm and Nick started to fade out. Suddenly he heard a voice. It was a low but strange voice. You're no good to me when you're dead. Brandon opened his eyes to see nothing but black. A figure came into view. It was a red shadow figure with orange eyes. Who are you? Brandon asked. I am the Inferno, the figure said. What Brandon asked. Your parents knew you were different from the moment they laid eyes on you. The look on your face as you stared right into their soul, the figure known as the Inferno explained. What do you mean? Brandon asked. I've always been here Brandon. The place where you were born was my tomb. Once you drew breath, I saw you as my chance to escape the tomb I was trapped in, the Inferno said. What do you mean? What tomb? Brandon yelled. The Inferno laughed and said your parents were criminals. They were hiding from the cops in my ancient tomb when you were born, thousands of miles from the nearest city. When your parents were caught, the cops put you in an orphanage to at least give you a chance. But I assume it didn't work out well. But now you have me, I entered your body to finally free myself from my prison. I could have gotten rid of you and taken your body all for myself, but I decided not to. You are the perfect person to share a body with. Brandon sighed and said well look at me now, dead. The Inferno walked over and placed his hand on Brandon's shoulder and said just wait. Then a light appeared, and Brandon closed his eyes to shield them from it. He waited five seconds before opening them again. He was back in the execution chamber. There were bodies everywhere. He looked at his hands, they were covered in blood. Don't worry. You can clean it off. Brandon heard that voice in his head. It was the Inferno. Brandon was still confused, 
but he knew that if he was gonna get out of there, he had to do it now. Suddenly the alarm went off, and 20 guards made their way into the chamber and pointed guns at him. Brandon panicked, but then he felt something in his hand. He lifted his hand to see bloody red, blazing fire. Before Brandon knew it, he threw a fireball at the guards, and it caused a small explosion and the guards went flying all over the place. Run the inferno's voice said. Brandon didn't think twice. He ran out the door and down the prison hall. He didn't even realize he was igniting the floor with every step he took. More guards came running down the hall toward Brandon. However, Brandon didn't stop. He was still running. He tried to stop, but his legs wouldn't let him. The guards formed a wall in front of Brandon to stop him. Brandon still ran and when he reached the guards, he shoved them aside easily and kept running. He tried to process what had just happened. He knocked over 30 guards that were nearly his size, some of them were bigger. He couldn't believe how strong he had become. He didn't stop to think. He needed to find the exit. He did stop, however, when 100 guards were suddenly in front of him. Where did they even come from? Suddenly an explosion of red flames erupted in the middle of the army of prison guards. Brandon, however, had no idea what had just happened. Then the inferno's voice spoke in his head. You're welcome. You did that? Brandon asked. Yes, the inferno said. Brandon ran down the hall until he needed to make a turn, left or right. He didn't even know where he was going. Turn left, the inferno said. Brandon did as the inferno said. He ran down the left hall until he had to make another choice on where to go. The Inferno, however, knew the way out. The Inferno told Brandon where to go until they made it to the exit. Once Brandon was outside, he heard hundreds of footsteps from inside the prison. The rest of the guards were coming for him. Get in the car, the inferno said. Brandon saw a police car parked just to his left, but he didn't have the keys. Just get in, the infern yelled. Brandon didn't see how this was going to work, but he did as the inferno said. He ran over to the car and tried to open the door, but it was locked. Hit the glass. The inferno said. What? Brandon asked. Hit the glass. The inferno yelled. Brandon punched the window causing it to shatter. Brandon looked at his fist as if he was going crazy. The inferno interrupted his thoughts, however. Get in now. Brandon opened the door and climbed in. He put his hands on the wheel and waited. Suddenly his hands were covered in red flames from before. The red flames spread throughout the car. Then the engine started. Brandon hit the gas pedal and the car shot like a rocket out of the parking lot. Red flames appeared below the tires. Thank you, Inferno, Brandon said. You can thank me with more kills, the Inferno said. What? Brandon asked. More kills. I want more blood, the Inferno said. It can be the ones you prefer to kill. Brandon thought for a minute before saying. I guess I owe you so. Fine, 
Brandon was now a criminal on the run, but he would continue his killing spree just to make sure the Inferno gets enough blood for satisfaction. One day Brandon asked the Inferno what happened in the death chamber since he couldn't remember. The Inferno showed Brandon a vision of what had happened. Brandon's body was still for 10 seconds before his eyes bursted open. They were a devilish orange color. He started violently shaking, trying to get out of the restraints. His head started burning. He started yelling. His blood veins were a bright glowing red. Everyone in the chamber was confused and terrified. People were trying to get out of the room. Then a small explosion erupted in the room. The warden was the only one still alive. Then out of the dark smoke the explosion caused, a red flame appeared. Out of the darkness, Brandon appeared. The red flame was wrapped around his head. He was smiling at the warden. The warden tried to get away, but Brandon grabbed him by the neck and lifted him in the air. Any last words? Brandon said with a low, demonic voice. Please the warden screamed before going up in flames.